Uh, Jason, what, what type of tone did Gafford set you know, early on in the game with his uh, aggressiveness around the basket? Yeah, I thought he was great. Um, you know, uh, bounce back, uh, you know, from, you know, being able to offensive rebound, uh, finish, um, and then defensively at the rim. I thought he was really good for us. Uh, um, protected the paint. Um, we, you know, just understanding um, he, he played a really good game and he helped our defense at a high level. I guys didn't have a lot of lob dunks the first two games. Just talk about the impact of the lob dunks tonight. Yeah, I thought uh, in that first half we had 10, I think. And uh, in the first two games, that's probably, you know, the total that we had. So just understand what they were taking away. Um, I thought I told Kai he probably had a career high at lobs. Um, you know, he was really in tune with, uh, with D-Live and, and Gaff. And uh, just, you know, being able to get to the paint and, and the late pass, the lob was, was big for us and our bigs finished uh, this evening. Um, but just being able to get the ball in the paint, we didn't turn it over. Um, they got great hands, and anytime you drive the ball, they're swinging at it. And I thought for us to only have eight turnovers was big. You said they weren't giving you the lobs, but so in essence, how did you take them back? I know some of them were in tra transition. Yeah, I think when you, when you look at just being able to get the ball in the paint and uh, Kai's ability to score in the paint. And so you have to, you know, pick your poison. If you're going to let him get going, um, he will, will take it. And then for him to be able to read that if they step up, uh, he's, he's able to dump it off. And I thought um, being the quarterback between him and Luca tonight was at a high level with the lob and being able to get others involved. And then, you know, P.J. had 10 points and five rebounds. I don't really think that was that really measures his game. How would you kind of describe the presence that he brought tonight? Yeah, I think when you look at PJ, he's been consistent on the defensive end, um, and then being able to get out on, on the break. We had 22 fast break points, and, and that's something that we've talked about, you know, in this series. Um, but PJ has been great. Um, he's not afraid of anything. Um, he competes at, at a high level. Um, he's been a big part of this team since he's been here, and you can see that he's comfortable. Piggybacking on not afraid of anything. He obviously went jaw to jaw with a couple of their guys. What does it mean for your team to have a guy that's ready and yeah, every, to every, everybody's tough. Um, just looking at um, you know he's competing. Uh, we're all competing for for each inch to to find a way to win. And you know this series is going to be more mental as as it goes on because just of the physical physicality, the play is. Is very physical, but the mental aspect of this series, um, we have to be sharp and we have to understand what's taking place. Um, and I thought the guys did a great job of protecting one another. Jason, to kind of further that notion, uh, you talked about the physicality and the mentality. What was the message to your team in terms of keeping your con composure when it looked like they may have lost theirs on this night? Yeah, I think uh, we, we've talked about our energy, you know, positive energy, um, protecting one another, trusting each other. You can see the chemistry is at a high level on, on both ends. And so uh, that's just something that we've always talked about is uh, making sure that uh, we're not making the, um, you know, a bad mistake and putting our teammates or our team in a bad situation. And uh, I thought the guys did a good job and have done a good job of protecting one another. Um. We talked about it earlier about the lobs, but was it an emphasis to attack the inside and to make sure that you you guys can play your game? Yeah, we're, we're trying. You know, again, they're very good at swiping and, and making sure that you don't get to the paint. And so, uh, I thought the guys did a great job of the ball touching the paint and being able to secure it, uh, being able to finish them. That we some of the plays that we've missed. You know, some layups. Uh, but to be able to get the lob in, involved uh, tonight was big uh, on both ends, just for our energy and then also on the defensive side that, you know, carried over with our energy and, and just understanding that's been a big part of, you know, our success offensively is being able to play, um, you know, above the rim. Hey, Jason. Uh, Kyrie Irving, he had two points in the first half. He had 21 points overall, 21 um, – I'm sorry, uh, 19 points in the second half. Just what's your assessment on his impact that he has when he can get it going at any time to help your team out? Yeah, I think to be able to have, um, you know, a guy like Kai that understands the game, I think he was plus 10 in the in the first half and only had two points. So he had a big impact um, without scoring. 
Um, and then to be able to, uh, you know, he ex exerts a lot of energy on the defensive side of the ball. And then the, in the second half to be able to do what he's done for us all season is to be able to, you know, make – when they go on a run, he's be a, he answers the call by making a big three. Um, but I think this is calming – Effect. He's never in a rush. He's never going to panic. Uh, he feels that everything's under control, and the guys trust him out there on the floor, and you can see that in the second half. Jason. How would you rate the energy, effort, and enthusiasm of your team tonight? Yeah, it, was, it was good. Um, we, we got a long ways to go, um, but this is a great uh, stepping stone for us to be able to continue to keep building. Um, we haven't done anything. We, we protected home. Half of the serve is now to you know protect Sunday, um, just like we did at, at their place. Uh, we won that second game, so we understand what's at stake uh, for Sunday. And now we got to go back and see how we can get better. Jason Luca had 12 points, five rebounds, and five assists in the second quarter after leaving the game in the first. Um, just what can you share with us about the injury he had, and what does it say that he was able to kind of fight through it for the rest of the game? Yeah, you know, I think um, – I don't know if he was hurt. Um, I don't think he ever left the, the bench. Um, uh, just to, to be able to uh, play the minutes that he's playing, he played 40. We got his minutes down tonight. Um, understanding uh, we lean on him to do a lot for us on the offense and defense side of the ball. But um, I, he might – I don't know if it was hurt or um, – he was just trying to get warmed up, but um, he had a lot of good looks uh, for us. He created a lot of baskets for our teammates. Um, but again, defensively, I thought he was big. Uh, in that first half, he came up with some really incredible plays, um, you know, some deflections, and he was in the right place at the right time defensively. Coach Kidd, with Josh Green, he played more minutes tonight than both of the first two games combined. What did you think of his overall performance and specifically his defense on some of the Clippers' stars? Yeah, he was. Josh was great. He was great. He stepped up. Uh, we had someone down. He stepped in uh, and played played his role and did his did his job tonight. And we're going to need him to do that on Sunday. Jason, you guys had 19 turnovers. What's impressed you most about your defense through these first three games, and how do you keep it going on Sunday? Yeah, you know that's something that we've taken pride in is trying to you know be as be one of the best defensive teams in the league against uh, the Clippers, who are, you know, future Hall of Famers. they got weapons everywhere. Um, and so we're just trying to make it tough, um, and we're getting our hands on some uh, on some of the passes. Um, we're rebounding the ball, which is big. Uh, you can't give them second opportunities. And so um, just, again, trying to make it tough, understanding Harden, you know, is not just going to let you do what you want. He's, he's shooting the three at a high rate. Um, we got to figure out how to slow him down a little bit. But... Again, we're active on the defensive end. We're going to need that for Sunday. Um, oh, one last question. Um, I know we talked about the aggressiveness, aggressiveness on the other side of the ball, but what about the efficiency from the bigs in this game? Yeah, I th our bigs were big. Um, and I think in the first two games, um, well, in game one, um, we weren't, you know, we weren't, ex we didn't exist uh, there. But I thought in the second half of game one, we showed up. And I think since the game one and that second half, we've been playing Mavs basketball. And so we, again, we got to continue. This is a veteran ball club. They've been in every situation. So um, there's nothing to, for us to celebrate. We got to get back to work tomorrow and get ready for Sunday. Thanks. Um, you just got to keep your composure. You know, it gets chippy. You know, it's the playoffs, and um, everyone wants to play well and do well. But, you know, we just got to keep our composure no matter how the calls go, you know. Um, just got just to gotta keep your composure, like you said. And so um, we got to be better than that down the stretch when it comes to that. I only played two minutes in the first half and 25 for the game. Um, what's going on with him? Is he okay physically? Is he still trying to find his way back into the game? He's trying to find his way back, and like I said, we're just managing. You know, he has knee swell, he has a knee inflammation, and so just being smart, making sure we're doing right by Kawhi, and seeing how he feels, and just kind of gauge it from there. You know, and so he's just still trying to find his rhythm, trying to find his way, and we got to make sure we help him do that. Is he feeling anything new with that inflammation? Um, I don't think you got to ask him. I don't think he's feeling anything new, but he's still, you know, the inflammation's there, and um, we got to just manage him the best we can. You know, he wants to play, he wants to be on the floor, and so we just got to make sure we're doing it right by Kawhi. 
do you think he's still possible for the next game? Yes, sir. Not having Paul available much of the game because of the foul trouble. What? What was it going on with him? Kind of put him in a situation where he couldn't be available for you guys. Um, with with PG, yeah, we got some early fouls and kind of you know was in foul trouble from that point on. You know, and so you know we talked about it after the game like you know. He's one of our best players, so we, we can't, you know, we can't have those fouls. We gotta keep you on the floor. And it's like a trickle down effect. You know, if he if he gets early fouls, now James has to play forty four minutes. Now he's not his same. I mean he's not his self. And so those are things we gotta get better with. But, you know, just to you know, with the game, you know, having nineteen turnovers for twenty nine points, especially on the road, it's hard to win a game like that in the playoffs, especially when you're struggling to score. So we got to be better with that, and we just gotta, you know, we gotta play faster. We gotta get into our sets quicker, and we gotta understand that. You know, we got to play different. Like what you've done in the past, the way they're playing us, we have the blueprint of how they're playing us. So we got to do things different and do things better. But, you know, like I said, I wouldn't question our guys' fight and what they're trying to do. Um, but when, you know, when things get hard, you just can't take it on yourself and try to do it another way. So, um, you know, they play well. You know, they really, really well defensively. Um, we got some shots that we normally could make, we didn't make. And um, I'm just still proud of our group for what we've been able to do defensively against this team, who's uh, very explosive offensively. And um, we just got to do a better job of scoring the basketball. What's it going to take to get you keep talking about the offense? You keep trying to find it. Well, I mean, it's it's there. It's there in spurts. It's there in moments. And we, we're getting shots that we normally can make. But we got to take care of the basketball. You know, you can't turn the ball over 19 times, um, especially on the road, and expect to win a game against a, a really good team. So we got to be better with that. You talk about uh, how good the defense uh, has been uh, over the course of the series and tonight. But um, that second quarter where they did break out for 36, where they had you know, those scoring runs early and late in the quarter. What, what would you see in there, and, and how did you kind of address that at halftime? Turnovers. You turn the ball over, able to, get, able to get out in transition, and a lot of pick sixes, and we couldn't recover. You know, so we just got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. Is it hard to, to try to go quicker when, when Kawhi's out there sort of still managing and trying to find his way? Yeah, but I mean, you know, you still can play fast around him, you know, until he finds his rhythm and finds his way. And we know, we know what we're supposed to do. I mean, we did it. You know, we did it at times, and we just can't get frustrated. You can't make a shot, or you can't get frustrated when things are not going your way offensively. And you know, game one, I think we made 18 threes. Game two, eight threes, and tonight, 10. You know, so it's gonna be hard to make. I mean, to win games when you're struggling shooting the ball. So we got to just have the aggressive mindset of attacking the basket when we get into the paint. We know they're bringing four and five guys, so we got to make the right play. And that guy has to make a shot or put it back down the floor and make another play, you know. And so um, I'm okay with that. Coach, talk about the aggressiveness of the team and the technicals and the uh, fouls out there. How do you use that as a catalyst for game four? Um, we got to channel our aggression in other ways, you know. Um, but, you know, it's getting chippy. You know, it's just the playoffs. You know, I like the physicality. I like the, you know, the tough possessions. I like all that, you know. But we just got to make sure that we're not getting technical fouls. We're not getting thrown out of the game because everybody's important. And how did you think Kawhi actually did look? Did he did he look like he was getting better as the game went on? Like, first, second half, mid or first? Yeah, I thought, I thought he got a little better in the second half, you know. So just got to talk to him and just, you know, how he feels, you know, where he's comfortable with getting the ball at, you know, where he's comfortable making plays. Until you know he finds his rhythm, you know, and so um, you know, and just kind of go from there. Thank you. Yeah. So, Kawhi, what's your assessment of the game tonight? Um. I think we had um, too many turnovers. Um, you know, we can't have 19 turnovers on the road. Um, I think that's the start of it. And, um, you know, they shot 16 more times in this, and um, we got to limit their uh, second chance points as well. You only played 25 minutes, uh, so what's going on? Uh, just didn't respond the way we wanted after the first game, but uh, you know we're gonna get it right. Um, you know, um, time will tell, but uh, we're doing all the right things. Come back, or is it something that's still there where you just manage it? Um, uh, it was pretty good uh, the first game. Like I said, didn't respond the way we wanted it to, uh, and um, you know tonight. Uh, 
you know, it was either, uh, you know, play or um, limited minutes or not play. And um, I want to be on the floor to help the team. And, um, you know, that's that's what the the result, results are. Um, frustrating that it happened uh, to me um, this late in the season. But, um, yeah, I'm just, we're going to keep going. We're going to get it right. Yeah, uh, the way right now, uh, you know, I'll see tomorrow. Um, but, um, you know, uh, I want to play, so. 36 to eight, 36 to 16 or 18 in the second quarter. Was that, do you blame all that on turnovers or what did you see happening there? Um, I got to watch it. I'm not sure when all those turnovers came, but, you know, got to give Dallas credit. Um, they did a good job of uh, protecting home floor coming out in that second quarter, um, you know, with an aggressive mindset and knocking down shots. Why do you think Dallas was able to get to the rim as much as they did tonight when they weren't able to do these, the first couple games of the series? Um, I think we gave their bigs a lot of um, lob dunks, so I think that's accounted for. Uh, and, um, you know, some of those second chance points I was talking about, uh, um, you know, rebound, layups, and uh, maybe putbacks. But uh, um, I think uh, it started off with, uh, you know, um, I think Gafford and Lively got some good uh, lob dunks tonight. But what are you limited at that you can't do that you normally have been able to when you've been fully healthy? Um, I mean, tonight, just playing minutes, you know. Uh, <clears throat> And then obviously not playing probably the last uh, whatever days that was from uh, that last game before, um, you know, playoffs started. And, um, you know, it takes time, um, you know, uh, to get in the rhythm, like I was saying before. And, um, you know, um, I'm just happy I played. Um, for the most part, I was able to get out there and uh, um, experience uh, the game. How do you feel in terms of explosiveness compared to, to your norm? Um, uh, like I said, I'm still trying to get back in the rhythm. Um, but, um, you know, got to give uh, the other team credit as well. i um, playing good defense. Um, but, um, yeah, um, I'm going to keep going. Well, you see That's that fun. Paul is really, you know, trying to find a way to defend without fouling, find a way to stay on the floor. I mean, especially with what you're going through, trying to get your rhythm back. Uh, how have you kind of communicated with Paul to, you know, try and just stay on the floor and, and be his best version of himself with you. Uh, just got to show our hands, I guess, more uh, or, or for him. Um, some I, I feel like some of those fouls were in, uh, were in foul calls. I felt like guys were kind of out of out of control at times. But uh, we got to help him, um, you know, uh, just get more open looks. Um, they're doing a good job shrinking the floor, uh, making sure that we have no penetration um, to get to the paint. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to get you in any trouble. Foul trouble, back-to-back -back games. What do you need to do differently to stay on the court? Good question. Um, in the past three games, um, I don't know what it is. Um, I thought this was playoff basketball. A couple of them, it's just been touch fouls. And um, I don't know. Defense can be physical. They can be aggressive on me. Other side of it, I pick up quick, cheap ones, and and you know it's, it's frustrating. Uh, but I, I I gotta be better. I gotta be better because uh, I feel good, rhythm wise, to start the game off, and then pick up those, get sent to the bench, and then it just felt like the whole game I couldn't find how to be aggressive and create contact and balance all of that out while trying to stay within the offense and, you know, move the ball and play off the ball, play, be aggressive downhill. Like, it was just a lot I was thinking about. Took me out of my game. I got to be better. Um, it, it's, it was frustrating, though. Part of that also because Kawhi is playing limited minutes. He's playing with a knee that's not helping him out. 
sort of the conversation that you had, I guess, with yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, put pressure on James. James had to play 44 minutes. Um, you know, it, it just it puts us out of sync. Now, T. Lou's in his rotations earlier than expected. Guys aren't playing at the times they're used to playing. Um, it, it, it just throws the whole team off. And, uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, I'll take, I take, you know, blame on that. Um, I don't know what, you know, some of those is – it's just some of them were flops, I, I, I thought. Um, and, you know, we talk about this word marginal when it comes to fouling. I thought a lot of it was marginal. It wasn't just you had a frustrating night, but overall the whole team seemed frustrated. Where did, where did, why did things unravel for you guys emotionally? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think, uh, again, we played good defensively. Um, I thought we got out of character with a couple turnovers. Um, but, you know, for us, it's just offense. We got to figure out how to generate better looks and quicker looks offensively. Mm -hmm. uh, Kawhi told us that his knee didn't respond the way he had hoped to after game one, and it has to be managed. He's hopeful he'll play the next game. But uh, what's your concern level with uh, Kawhi? Um, I mean, we're all, you know, we all – want the best for him, you know, like I've said, to start this out, he's one of the most competitive people. Um, and so, you know, that alone he's battling of not being able to be 100% and be uh, here 100% for us. Um, but, you know, we, we just, you know, we, we got to cover and pick up the slack and, and, and appreciate what he's given us, um, you know, we know he's not 100, but but he's still trying to suit up and, and give us whatever he can. Um, but, you know, definitely feel for him. You know, I know he's been working hard. And, uh, you know, again, to get to this point, you know, where we want to make a push um, and, uh, you know, he can't, you know, can't be 100 percent right now. You help. So you have, you had a little bit of a layoff before the playoffs too, and obviously Kawhi. The two of you were sort of like looking for your rhythm at the same time, in, in the midst of this like crazy, you know, intense playoff series. Like, how hard is that to do to sort of navigate? Yeah, I mean, I thought it'd be easier uh, until you're actually in it, and then uh, you kind of figure it out. Um, you know, a little time off does affect timing and flow and rhythm. I thought I was in a great rhythm to end the season. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's not an excuse. You know, it's not an excuse. Um, again, I thought starting the night, I, f I found the rhythm. I thought I was in good rhythm. I felt, you know, I was going to be uh, in attack mode all night. Uh, but then you get sidelined and, you know, you kind of scramble from that point on. Um, so, yeah, again, I thought tonight I was going to have, you know, be able to play my game and, and be in attack mode and, and uh, you know, take advantage of, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one opportunities. As a leader of the team, do you feel the guys are feeling uh, pressure to make up for Kawhi's um, limited action, or is that inspirational for them to try to fill his role? No, I mean, we like we've been saying, I mean, we got enough, you know, uh, talent in this locker room um, with Kawhi um, being down to win games still. Um, and so it's just everybody playing their part. You know, um, James is still one of the best in the world. Um, Russ is still one of the best in the world. Um, myself, I mean, we still have enough. And we've been, um, you know, playing at the highest level in our careers before. It's not nothing new to us now. So um, I think we just got to play our game um, and, and, and just focus on that. What do you feel like um, is the, we discussed before about how they're shrinking the floor, packing the paint. Um, what do you feel like you guys are going to need to do to break through on just the interior scoring part of this series? Uh, I think that's more so for us to discuss um, in the locker room. I think that's more for us to discuss. Do you feel like from what we've seen, Dallas is, you know, their, their ability to guard you guys and, and, and everything? Like, how do you assess what they're doing that's, that's been successful? Yeah, I mean, what they're doing is, is just crowding. Uh, trying to get us uh, to play in crowds, um, daring us to move the ball, um, and, uh, you know, honestly just relying, you know, are we going to pass it? Are we going to give it up? Are we going to get off of it? Um, and, uh, you know, I think 
overall has forced us to shoot uh, contested threes or, or, or you know, um, uh, either that or, or, or drive it in the paint where they're, where they're packing it. I think that's the options that they're giving us. Um, but, you know, I think we can, we can figure it out. Um, we know what they're doing. Um, we just have to uh, kind of just counter it at this point. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Ooh. What's up, everybody? Doing good, man. Let's get to Derek, it. Derek, one thing that Coach Kidd said is he said that all of y'all did a great job of protecting one another. Could you talk about the physicality of tonight's game and y'all standing up for your teammates? You know, I feel like these last two games have definitely set the tone of physicality. You know, the, the officials aren't really calling any calls and they're just going to let us play. So it's really going to come down to whoever, whatever team comes out and throw the first punch and is able to take a punch and throw another back. Just being able to be try to be the aggressor the whole night. Derek, you guys had 10 dunks in the first half, um, 13, I think, overall for the game. Um, what was working out there with the lives, especially from Kyrie? Uh, just trusting one another. You know, everybody knows that if anybody steps up to them, me and Gaff are chilling behind them, ready for the lob. So just being able to know that trust and chemistry is really going to take us the whole way. Uh, Derek, speaking of those lobs, when you finish one of those and you hear the entire American Airlines Center kind of go crazy, what is that feeling like when you're kind of walking back down the court? That's real hard to describe. You know, there's not a, not a lot of feelings that can really be up to that standard. Everybody in the arena was yelling, and it just felt like everybody in there wanted us to win as much as the whole team did. So just being able to have that amount of energy behind us just makes us want to play that much harder. Derek, I wanted to ask, I know we talked about the physicality, but Luca, the way he kind of just ran over when things were getting out of hand to stop things, and then when, you know, when he got pushed, he walked away. What does that do just as a leader in that type of scenario? You know, it shows how he's locked in. He's locked into winning. He's not locked into the nastiness of what can go on in the game. You know, there's going to be a lot of times where people are going to try to get him out of his comfort zone, going to try to get him out of his rhythm, or to try to get into his head. And all he, all he needs to do is know that his teammates got his back. We're going to step in and make sure he could, he could cool out and make sure he go back on the other side of the play. In the first half when uh, Harden was on, had that little run of threes, Luca went to the bench and called out to the coaches, give me Harden. Yep. What does that say about the defensive mentality that it seems like you all have adopted as a unit in this series? Uh, I think we all can see it. You know, I think we all see that when, our, when we're on the defensive side, there's a, there's a different look in everybody's eye. It's like being aggressive and being the aggressor even though that they have the ball. You know, we know, we know what they're good at. We know what they're bad at. And we're just trying to be able to put them in spots where really, – really hard spots where they could either don't like the shot they're in or it's a really contested shot. Derek, tonight, uh, you know, the first two games were kind of light for you scoring. Tonight you were able to go for double figures off the bench. What do you think clicked for you this evening? Just being able to have good teammates to find me when I'm open. You know, there's going to be people who's going to step up to try to stop Kyrie and Luka, and that's where I can just feed off of. You know, either dump offs, lobs, or putbacks. There's just ways that I can affect the game. And Derek, we obviously know Sunday's going to be another intense battle. What level of mental focus is it going to take for you guys to get the job done on Sunday? Uh, just being able to, oh, a lot, honestly, being able to be poised. You know, there's, they're great players. They're going to go on runs. They're going to go on streaks where they make points or where we can't make anything. And we got to be able to be together. We got to be able to know that no matter what's going on in the court, we got to figure out what we need to do and execute. Derek, when you think back to the start of the year, could you win a game like this with without hitting a bunch of threes, without Luka and Kyrie having huge point totals, you know, one that's based off the defense, off the physicality? It would definitely make the game a lot rougher. You know, I'm definitely not going to say that we want to win the game, but it would be a dogfight. I feel like each game in this playoff series is going to be a dogfight and so on and so forth. So being able to know that if it's going to be a fight, we're going to come out swinging. Derek, now that PJ has been on the team for a couple months now and tonight, super physical, he was involved in a couple altercations. He ended up getting ejected. What does PJ kind of being a dog do for y'all as a team? It rouses up. He's like the legs and he's like the mouth of the team. Being able to know that he got our back, he's talking on defense, and as soon as we are in transition, he's running the floor. You know, he's one of our, if not the best defense, defensive player we have. So when he's on their best defender, I mean, their best offensive player, and he's getting it in their head, he's making it difficult for them, that just makes everybody else want to step up and be able to play harder. Derek, do you think this level of defense is sustainable night after night? Oh. 
It's really just going to come down to us being disciplined, us being locked into each play, because that's what the playoff is, is possession by possession. Derek, what, what does it say about Daniel to overcome um, his tough first two games, overcome the back spasms? And he had a couple of highlights out there, especially at that block on Paul George. It just shows his grit. It just shows how much he wants to win. You know, a lot of people are, some people are banged up. Some people are going through things off the court. But whenever it comes to us being in the locker room, us being together, that's whenever we're all together. We all trust one another. We all have a lot of great chemistry. And we being able to know that we're going out there and we're playing for something. We're not going out and playing out for each other. Can you talk about the enthusiasm and the effort and the energy that you guys exuded tonight? It, the whole arena was electric. How did you feed off of that? And how will you ride that wave of momentum? Just being able to know that we got one another. You know, no matter if the arena's full, if the arena's empty, we're playing basketball. We go out there, we have each other's backs. We go out there and make sure that no matter what's going on, no matter who has a run or not, we're going to be able to know that we got to do what we got to do. We got to play defense. We got to get out. We got to run. And we got to execute on the offensive end. And that just comes down to simple basketball. Derek, we know that uh, Tyson Chandler and you have been at the hip pretty much the whole season. How much has he helped you in your first playoff series? Um, words can't even describe how much he's helped me. Being able to know that I got to focus on the court whenever there's so much things going on off the court. That's kind of the hardest part. I love playing basketball each day, but it's hard to wake up whenever there's a lot of things going on in the off-court life. But he's been able to help me keep my head on my two shoulders, help me stay focused, and he's just someone I can go and talk to no matter what the situation is. And he's definitely been a humongous help. Appreciate y'all. Have a good one. Well, Kyrie, uh, talk about the performance of your team tonight. You came out with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. The Clippers came back in the third quarter, cut it to single digits, but then you turned it on. Talk about the performance of the team tonight. Yeah, I think we had a, a good start to the game, great energy, like you said, and um, we were just feeding off of that and trying to make the right plays. Um, you know, in a playoff game, uh, game three, it could go either way, just depending on how you start and also how you uh, continue to to be resilient in those, in those next three quarters. Uh, so I think we did a good job of just sticking to our game plan and being aware that they were going to make plays within the plays and sometimes break it off. So we had to be aware of um, some of their quick decisions and um, be aware of T. Lou's play calling out of timeouts. Uh, he's shooting a, or he's a, he has a pretty high percentage against us right now. So we obviously want to cut that down. But um, when it gets to the gritty part of the game, I feel like we responded and we kept our emotions and we were able to uh, you know, battle to the end and come out with this win. So I feel pretty good. Kyrie, congrats on the one. I talked to AJ after the game. He got his first playoff bucket. I know you've had a lot of accomplishments throughout your career, but I'm curious, do you remember your pl first playoff bucket? Yeah, I do. I do. And uh, it's, it's something that you don't want to take for granted. I didn't take for granted. And I was telling those young guys when they got in, go after it, um, you know, minutes in a playoff game or it's just as important as any other minute. Um, you just never know when your number is going to be called. So uh, I'm glad that AJ answered the call and, and I was able to get get a lob and feel good about himself. And we were cheering him on. And that's what team basketball is about. It's just everybody, um, you know, fulfilling their role, but also celebrating the small wins out there, you know, even if it's at the end of the game. Chase was talking about the positive impact you had, even though you had two first half points, you were a plus 10 on the court and doing everything else. How uh, can you explain the process you go through mentally, just kind of staying patient, and then all of a sudden, they get within six in the third quarter, and you kind of kick into overdrive. Uh, yeah, I definitely would love to speak to that in detail uh, in the future. Um, not, I'll answer your question. I was saying I would love to talk to the younger generation about it because there are things that I struggle with as a young player, uh, especially in high intense moments where um, you know you're kind of used to having the ball in your hands, or you look up at the scoreboard, which a lot of us happen to do. Um, you know, I know I'm not the only one, and. Sometimes if you don't see your points total looking like normal, you can psych yourself out of the game and you can end up being in a position mentally where you're not able to still impact positively. And, you know, that's something in competitive sports we don't talk about often. Uh, it's just the external pressure that people put on themselves to 
live up to certain expectations when it's just one game, <laughs> you know, you're playing in the playoffs. And if you look at the history of the game, there's not a fancy formula that all these championship teams had. They just continued to battle, continued to do the little things on the defensive end first, and then allowed their offense to flourish. If you look at some of the greatest players in history, some of their, you know, low moments, you know, they didn't score much, but they had a huge impact on the game. So I try to have that same approach mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and then allow my physical talents and abilities to play out in the right time and right situation. So just being mature about it, man, is two points, you know, so you know, the F what, it's it's about winning the game at the end of the day and making an impact when it's needed most. Kyrie, how do you think you guys and PJ in particular handled the extra chippiness that uh, occurred in the fourth quarter? Uh, I mean, I was just telling my wife this other day. I think we spoil the fans in the regular season in terms of how many points are scored and, and how, um, you know, it's a different style of basketball when we get into the playoffs and it gets a little extra chippy. And, you know, I, I think when you're seeing the true competitive nature of certain guys, uh, it's human, you know, and um, you got to be able to control it. That's that's the uh, key to all this. And um, if you're going to dish it out, you better be able to have some be ready or prepare for somebody to dish it back to you. So uh, you just got to pick and choose your battles wisely, know who you can get under a little bit mentally and um, – just focus on the big picture at the end of it. You know, that, that's overall. It's just don't get kicked out of the game. Um, but if you are, then just make it worth your while and um, just make sure we're winning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just make sure we're winning. And um, that covers a lot of mistakes is when you win, you, you kind of get <laughs> exit out of the game. But, you know, I think things are going to happen throughout the rest of the series and we just got to be prepared. And, um, you know, a lot of provoking going on, but it's just chippiness of the, of the NBA game and just basketball when. Uh, stretches get a little tough. Is there any benefit to embracing the theater of competition? Is there, what? Is there any benefit to embracing the theater of competition? Embracing the theater? What do you mean? Uh, you know, what comes with it? Exactly. With playoffs or just in basketball in general? Playoffs. Just playoffs? Yeah, it, you have to embrace it. Uh, and you also have to be conditioned mentally and physically um, to be able to dish it out. Uh, I think that's what you're seeing right now is um, both teams are saying physicality, physicality. And you got to be able to do it for four quarters and still be able to run your offense um, at a very high level, still stay efficient, don't force yourself into a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and then defensively uh, be there for your teammates and continue to stay locked in and focused. So, um, again, it's a chess match. You kind of just answered my question, um, Kyrie. When you're playing against an opponent who is not 100% and they can also often be seen as a, a wounded animal, and how do you guys maintain your focus to stay aggressive and re disregard that and get your job done? Uh, yeah, I mean, just making the main thing the main thing, which is winning the ball game. Um, you know, they, they're going to throw guys at us. We're going to throw guys at them. They have depth. We have depth. Um, you know, in a playoff series, I don't think anyone's really 100%. Uh, so we're, we're all battling through something uh, physically. But I think mentally, when you can galvanize the group and trust that when you go out, someone else will fill your spot and uh, continue to bring the energy, continue to do the right things on the offensive and defensive end. And um, that, that takes one stressor away from you um, if you are wounded, you know, or uh, a little injured. Um, and I know a lot about the injury bug. Um, especially in the playoffs. Um, you know, I could think back to just my Boston series where I played 20 games in that season, and you just don't have that extra gear. And everybody's been playing, you know, 60 games in the regular season, then you come into the playoff series. It's a little tough. Um, I think some of the greatest can do it, but when you're going against um, some guys that are really clicking at the right time, it's, you know, a little difficult to get your rhythm. Uh, so the playoffs are a different level. You don't get a chance to just fire away at will <laughs> like the regular season. Every possession matters, and um, for us, we just want to focus on our main thing, which is again winning the ball game. What has helped you guys click so e easily this second half of the season, if you will? Uh, I mean, we just took a look in the mirror, and we had a, a lot of bonding time off the court, and uh, we just did things as a team, and we went through adversity. We talked about it. We were very honest in our therapy sessions that we used to have after games sometimes. Uh, or at times, and uh, we we just were ready to move on to the next thing. We don't have time for distractions. You got to eliminate all those. So that's been the um, pretty much the mo in our locker room is you know when teams are coming at us, uh, look back at the times where we 
did not live up to our standard and use that as motivation and energy to continue to put your best foot forward. And I could live with the results, and I'm sure uh, as Luca walks in too, and Jay Kidd and the rest of us, we could live with the results if we put our best foot forward and the team just beats us that night. Um, or we're not shooting particularly well and we can rely on our defense or vice versa. So just keeping a big picture um, ahead of us. Hey, Curry, Ky- uh, you, you're uh, 19, you first forced 19 turnovers, 12 steals, I think seven or eight blocks. To put it in the NBA uh, theme this year, is the Mavs defense a thing now? Uh, I don't know if we're necessarily looking for recognition. Um, you know, uh, we'll see if you know this this journey continues and we get to the big stage and we can honestly be judged at the end of the season that way. But you know, it's just a, another game three um, and us just going back and watching film tomorrow and continuing to see where we can get better because we definitely weren't perfect tonight. I feel like we did some great things and it's you know we can celebrate that, but. Overall, we, we just know we have to keep that hunger inside of us and continue to want to be better. Kai, and we, we usually discuss foul trouble. We'll say like, you know, three fouls in the first half or four fouls in the third quarter. You picked up your fourth and you only had like two points, but the rest of the game, you had 19, you didn't pick up another foul. How did you manage that? How do you usually manage that? And, you know, how, how did, you know, you have so much success throughout foul trouble tonight? Uh, yeah, well, I would like to continue my streak of not fouling out of games. I, I think that's a positive. I I'm, like to think of myself as a valuable asset out there. So just got to play it smart and also understand that they're going to be targeting me a little bit and um, just be able to respond and, and just use my IQ to the best of my ability. It's not going to be the you know last time that I have four fouls. So just preparing for those moments and um, just – Reverting back to what I was talking about before, just trusting that the guy that comes in for me during that time also has that ability and belief and confidence from me that he can continue to either continue to run or give me a breather or give me time to be able to um, settle my thoughts because there were some fouls that I was committing that are uncharacteristic and you know I got to be real with myself and be accountable. Some of them I just can't commit and. Um, you know, so you look at it 2020 hindsight and you're like, I should do this better. But at the end of the day, it's a team game. So I got to trust whoever comes in with me and those situations are going to come up again. And we just got to be prepared as a team to deal with them. Yep. Obviously, there were a lot of lobs. I think Jason told Kai that he probably had a career high in lobs. Um, just what did you guys see from the film from games one and two that were you were able to kind of take advantage of that in this this game? I think our defense dictated the offense. So uh, I think we didn't play great offensively, uh, especially me. But you know, we won the game. That's all that matters. What did uh, Al you do for you um, guys momentum wise? Easy two points. Luca, in, in game one, you and Kai talked about the physicality has to be better. What, what's your assessment in game two and game three, which y'all won on the physicality? Oh, great. I think we uh, took now one, two steps uh, at the phys- physicality. Uh, so I think these last two games uh, was great physical, physical wise. So. Uh, but these three games passed, so we got to focus on the next one. And when you see PJ, you know, the crowd's going and he makes that pose, and uh, we see you smiling, uh, what's going through your mind, and, and how do you feel about PJ just protecting the team? Amazing, man. Uh, amazing. Uh, I have nothing else to say. Uh, the thing he does, uh, you know, he's a team player, he helps all of us. Uh, I'm just really happy we got him on our team. Luca, you talked about the physicality, but there was obviously some altercation type stuff tonight. How do you think you're, you're, you yourself and then the team responded to all that? That's fine. It's playing basketball. There's always going to be some. Uh, we stayed focused. Uh, we stayed locked in and just played the game. And then how are you able to channel? You're you know, an aggressive player, but you weren't looking to fight. Like When they came at you, you walked away. Um, how do you have that balance? I mean, because I'm used to that. Uh, I'm used to players coming to me at me. Uh, I'm used to that, so I'm just trying to stay calm and just keep playing basketball. Luca Lemos, uh, Fiorentina 
Antonio Pérez, presidente del Real Madrid hoy también en el partido. ¿Para ti qué significó que haya viajado para verte jugar? Muchísimo. Eso explica uh, la grandeza que tiene el Real Madrid. Eh, que Florentino venga a verme eh, en un partido de playoff es increíble. Eh, de verdad, le, le di muchas gracias por venir y, y es increíble que estuviera aquí. También vimos que ganaste un premio en la NBA por tu labor comunitaria. ¿Qué significa también eso para ti? Muchísimo. Eh, como he dicho ahí en, el, en la entrevista, eh, un baloncesto me dio muchísimo y entonces eh, tengo que devolver. Eh, tengo que devolver eh, porque me gusta hacerlo y. Eh, ojalá eh, lo, lo haga más. Luca, I wanted to ask you, Derek Lively II, he's someone who you had trust in right away, and he's been battling a tough time. I wanted to ask you, ask you about kind of him going through this tough time and still playing great, and then his game tonight as well. Amazing, man. Uh, the kid loves to play basketball. Uh, it's amazing. He's in a, I can't imagine how hard situation, and he's still performing well, uh, giving good energy, uh, just explains how great of a guy he is and how special, special guy he is. Look, what did you do to your knee? Um, and then, you know, how did that feel the rest of the game? And, you know, what do you think moving forward with that? Yeah, not good. Uh, I felt it before I hit the knee, so uh, it's pretty stiff right now. Uh, but we'll know more tomorrow. Uh, but you know me. I'll try to go anyways. Just to follow up in English uh, on, the, on the question you answered, uh, did you know Francisco was coming? And then what was your... Florentino. Um, well, um, yes, okay. Uh, did, did, and what was your uh, reaction when you found out he was coming and how do you feel about the fact that he came to see you play? Yeah, I knew he was coming. Uh, it was amazing, man. Uh, like I say, you, you can see the great uh, best club in the world is uh, Real Madrid. Uh, that the president comes and see my game. It was a special moment. Uh, I can't even explain it. And just, I was really happy that when I realized he was coming. Luca, I got to, oh, sorry, back here. Uh, congrats on the win. I got a chance to talk to AJ Lawson after the game, who obviously got his first playoff bucket. He was more happy with the win for the team, of course. But what does it do for you when you see, you know, young players like that getting their first playoff bucket and kind of growing in the league? Amazing. I mean, they're, they're great. Great guys, great players, and you see them cheer for us every time they're on the bench, which explains a lot of the great guys they are. And, you know, just keep working hard. You're going to be playing 40 minutes in this situation. So I appreciate those those young guys, you know. They always cheer for us. Luca, you guys had a lot of energy tonight. <clears throat> and so how do you ride that wave of momentum? And then also, what makes you so difficult to guard? Uh, yeah, we had big energy. Uh, that's why we got to play every game. Uh, the second question, I, I don't know. I mean, that's you got to ask other other people that the guards I me, mean, other coaches. So I think maybe I don't know. Hi, Luca. Uh, so you've been in the league, you know, six years now, right? Um, you kind of see where guys get into foul trouble um, and, and what foul trouble does to certain players if they have to come out. Like, how do you recognize how many fouls your defenders have and, and how do you attack that when you notice it? I mean, yeah, when they we try to attack guys that are in foul trouble for sure because uh, they're going to – they're not going to be that aggressive, especially if it's a good defender, you know. Uh, you you got to go at him because they're in foul trouble. They're not going to be the same defending. They're not going to be that aggressive, so you just got to go at them. Thank you. Thank you.